Hello, this is Dr. Hassel again. Welcome to another exciting tour through surgical pathology. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the nuances of pancreatic pathology with another case. This case is that of a 55-year-old uh, man who on routine screening was found to have a cystic lesion in the pancreas with a dilatation of the main pancreatic duct. Here's a cross-section showing pancreatic lobules. Here you see around the periphery and a rather striking cystically dilated space here, dilated ducts here and here, as well as some perhaps smaller cysts. <clears throat> The indications for biopsy or removal in this case would largely be based on size, um, potential uh, for malignancy, uh, and symptoms that the patient may be having. You can see even at low power that the pancreatic lobular parenchyma is mostly spared, although here you can see a little bit more pink tissue, probably indicating that there is some uh, fibrosis or loss of uh, parenchyma here and in fact as we zoom in on high power you can see that yes here's a pancreatic lobule that has become fibrotic and scarred down. We see remaining here uh, two ducts with uh, increased uh, basophilia to the nuclei and some tufting and heaping up of the epithelium this could be consistent with either pancreatic intraepithelial neoplasia, uh, mostly grade one. Uh, here we see also these enlarged uh, ductal type cells, um, or possibly involvement by a uh, pancreatic neoplasm. Here's another duct that we see involved by that as well. So let's go over to the main uh, lesion of concern uh, here, and we can see that there's some complexity to this. Uh, we have similar type of epithelium lining these uh, large cystic spaces with uh, an increased amount of this similar sort of tissue uh, surrounding this uh, enlarged duct. But there's not a lot of uh, cellular atypia here. The nuclei are mostly basally located. Uh, there's mucin within the epithelium. And if we go to really high power, you have a hard time even finding a nucleolus in these particular nucleoli. If we go a little bit further afield, we'll see there's also some papillarity to this epithelium. A little bit of heaping up of the papillae here. And over in this area, we'll see that there's quite a bit of papillarity and maybe even a degree of a slightly greater atypia. You see here uh, the nuclei are a little bit more stratified, a little bit less basal, and there's the beginning of a few nucleoli. A little further afield over here we can see again this very pronounced uh, papillarity and uh, tufting of the epithelium. Uh, heaping up, but again, mostly basal nuclei and no significant cytologic um, atypia of uh, any high-grade uh, nature. Here in this lesion, again, or this portion, we again see this papillarity uh, to the uh, tissue with some surrounding um, uh, glands as well. What we don't see here are evidence that these tissues have uh, dis become displaced and are present in either the interstitium or around nerves, which would be an important thing to look for. Here we see a duct that's within a central portion of the lobule, so it's certainly anatomically appropriate. If we go over here to the margins uh, of the lesion a little bit further, we can look further to see is there any other evidence that this is where it's inappropriate. 
Now we might wonder if maybe this uh, duct sitting all by itself here is evidence of invasive neoplasia. But in fact, um, it looks as though this duct here is associated with some islets over here. See, these are en endocrine islets. And so this may well have been a, a lobule that has become totally uh, atretic and lost any of the fibrosis tissue, leaving just this uh, side branch duct slightly dilated with a few residual islets around. In fact, we see no evidence of perineural or perivascular invasion by this neoplasm. Um, so in summary, this would be a nice example of an intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm of the pancreas. It's not invasive, though these can be associated with well-differentiated adenocarcinoma, either in situ or invasive. Um, and so the prognosis in this case should be very good for this patient. Um, so thanks for joining me on this case number three from the pancreas, a very classic example of introductal papillary mucinous neoplasia. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me and uh, we will try to deal with them. Thanks very much. Bye for now.